What's up again, everybody? Here is game number three of this Superman discount team. My opponent, Tyler, is going first. My good friend, Tyler, is rolling up three dice. He gets uh, some really good rolls here. He's got two question marks and a fist. He picks up a Jimmy Olsen, and he uses Resurrection to start off the game. Here is his team. He's running Jimmy Olsen Signal Watch. Obviously, that's a great choice. Ambassador of Peace, Wonder Woman, which is an interesting one. Uh, Steve Trevor, the three cost that uh, he gets reduced, um, or he actually he reduces Wonder Woman. Uh, he's got Cheetah, Feline Fury, and then the bottom row is just a bunch of really good cards. So we have the Reroll Batman, we've got the really nice Blanking Dwarf wizard we've got flying grayson rare nightwing and we've got that crazy superman that is the rare superman he's running resurrection and truce for his basic actions so we can uh, both be using each other's resurrections uh, we can pay two shields each turn and prep a die he didn't see that on uh, my team. I am running the chalkboard, so that first turn right there, and he used his resurrection global to prep one of his dice over, which is right there. So that starts off my turn. I'm going to roll up four dice. I get uh, three energy and one sidekick. That's a pretty great first roll because I can field said sidekick, and I've got everything I need there to prep over that signal watch Jimmy Olsen, which is what I do. So he's going to uh, draw three from his bag because he used Resurrection on turn one. It actually means he gets a one in, what, five chance? One in five chance of pulling a character and rolling it turn two, uh, which is the uh, old school way of getting some really good ramp going early. Back before uh, Chalkboard existed, that's how you would do it, how you would trigger the bag cycle early. He's going to pay all five, and he's going to pick up a Batman, which is a great card, and I don't have any villains whatsoever, or at least none that I plan on buying. Uh, so that can force me to re-roll everything in the field, which is very scary. Very powerful in a um, constraint type of uh, tournament, which this is. You know, there's a constraint being set up. Here we have an interesting, uh, interesting rolls. Do we go for Jimmy Olsen, or do we instead go for... Um, a Wonder Woman, and we choose to go for a Wonder Woman. Looks like we learned from our mistake last game. Pick up a Wonder Woman and prep it. Don't even worry about running, rolling that Jimmy Olsen. We just went for six energy, and we got it. So uh, the Batman that he bought turn one is now going to be nerfed as long as we can roll a Wonder Woman. And uh, last, last game, if you watched last game, that did not go so well because we rolled it four times, and it came up energy every time. So uh, he's rolling his uh, second roll, and he's got five energy. Let's see what he chooses to do with said five energy. He's going to pay one to uh, bring one sidekick from his used into the field, giving him a shield so that he can, I would imagine he can use that to chalkboard something. Um, he used the ring global on my... On my uh, oh yeah, he's gonna prep over Wonder Woman. I he used the Ring Global on my team to to uh, to pull a die from his uh, used pile. One of my favorite globals in this game. I just find it so interesting. I remember when it was first announced and uh, kind of spoiled uh, how awesome that Ring Global is. So Wonder Woman does not come up, which is unfortunate. Gonna reroll that along with probably some of those masks would be a good reroll because we don't have anything to do with masks. Keeping a sidekick's not a bad thing, <laughs> and she doesn't come up. Uh, she is she's not helping us out these uh, these past games. So we have four energy, which is a really awkward amount of energy for this team. Uh, if we had a Jimmy Olsen, we could purchase and prep over a Superman, but unfortunately we don't. Uh, we can also buy a Lois Lane here. I think the the Lois Lane purchase is smart. Um, the other option there is to prep over a Jimmy Olsen or just go straight for heart, some hardcore ramp. Uh, and we can do that by paying um, two shields for both usages of both globals on Resurrection. Which is not a bad idea. Um, the other thing of, uh, the other strategy of picking up Lois Lane now um, is nice, but this provides us to the opportunity to roll six dice next turn and to churn through our bag and get to Wonder Woman faster so we can try rolling her again, which is what we need when we're up against the craziness that is uh, that Batman that forces you to reroll. So he's drawing and let's see how he goes, how he does it. So he's going to roll his dice and uh, gets no character faces, which is good for me. He gets some sidekicks, 
So he's going to probably want to reroll both of those characters, obviously. And uh, decisions on uh, how many sidekicks he wants to reroll. I like the idea of keeping one, uh, but if you somehow land you know, everything on its top face, both of those characters on top faces, you can actually can't pay if you keep one. So I think that's the right pickup. Uh, picking up everything and re-rolling it, essentially. He fields his uh, Wonder Woman, and what Wonder Woman is doing is it's um, disallowing me to use Giganta's global, but that's about it, because it only affects character cards. So I'm not sure if you noticed that uh, it doesn't affect globals on um, action cards, so the... <laughs> Copious amounts of globals that I have on my team um, are basically unaffected, minus the spin-up global. So this is a good roll. Here we go. Starting my turn, we've got five energy, and Jimmy Olsen does indeed roll up. Unfortunately for us, um, well, fortunately, we don't have to pay to field him, which means we can just scoop everything. And we're looking for shields, and that's exactly what we want. Four shields and a fist is amazing. So we are going to definitely want to prep over a Jimmy, or sir, prep over a Superman. Um, with three energy. So, gonna pay. And that's actually, I think that's the incorrect way to pay because we're looking to. Yeah, here we go. Let's see. See if that's the right way. Yeah, no, you're gonna wanna pay one and then prep and then pay three to prep over said Superman and then use two remaining, or excuse me, one remaining shield to pop over um, a die with resurrection. So going to pay and prep, and then prep. There we go. And we're going to uh, see next turn if uh, Super Superman and Wonder Woman both decide to show up. So this was a uh, this this game was a lot of fun. There's a lot of talking between my myself and uh, Tyler here. Uh, I remember back to this game. It's. Uh, it's quite interesting. So he's going to roll up his dice and he lands a, lands a Batman here. He's going to field Batman, which is going to force me to re-roll these sidekicks. And uh, it's going to look like he can deal a lot of damage if none of these come up. Jimmy Olsen does come up, so that saves us, gives us a blocker. Um, but depending on if he chooses to attack, which it looks like he's setting up to attack, he's going to attack with three out of the four characters, keeping a sidekick back. Um, that's going to mean I'm going to take a decent amount of damage this turn. The best thing we can do, I think, is to allow the, the uh, Batman to go through, the one that forces all of our characters to reroll. Um, we're going to want to do that, most likely because, well, one, we got to get it back into the bag and hope that it doesn't get rolled, and uh, two, taking damage early is always better than taking damage later. And that's kind of an obvious thing to say, but it, you know, bears saying. Are we willing to take 7 damage, or are we willing to take 5 damage, or are we willing to take just any weird amount? Can we take all damage is the other question that we need to ask ourselves. I don't think it's uh, prudent to take, I think it would be 13 damage and go to 7. Uh, it feels really, really weak, even though we would have a huge backswing by rolling uh, Superman and Wonder Woman next turn. If both of those come up, then we we do have a really, really big swing. But I think it's better to just take the prudent route, block something, uh, force that to get re-rolled, and it looks like we are blocking uh, Steve Trevor, who's at his 4-1 side. So that's going to KO him, and I will end up taking 7. Dropping me to 13, leaving him with one blocker in the field, and us rolling three characters... Drawing three from the bag, they're going to be sidekicks because only sidekicks remain in the bag. Rolling those up, and Superman does come up, which is great. Uh, we have a sidekick. No, we don't have a sidekick. We're going to want to reroll both of those character faces that are energy. Um, honestly, right now, purchasing doesn't really matter, but the bolts don't help, so it's worth rerolling those bolts, and the fist isn't great because the fist doesn't do much for us um, as of right now. Now, we will have to pay for... Uh, pay for Superman if Jimmy Olsen doesn't come up and he doesn't come up and neither does uh, Wonder Woman. So we will have to pay the full price for <laughs> Superman and uh, Tyler is now ex extremely happy with that role and uh, giving me a ton of thumbs up and in trying to give the camera some thumbs up as well. <laughs> so he was very excited when he sees that, uh, that all of his wind fielded effects on his uh, favorite cards are not wiped. Um, 
<laughs> Unfortunately for us, that, that die continues to elude us. And uh, the fact that Jimmy Olsen is not out means we can't purchase another Superman for three, which makes this turn, again, very awkward. And it's kind of seeming to be this uh, forcing us to re-roll all of these things over and over and over again because things just aren't lining up has made me really feel weird about this whole team and combo. And it could very well be just variants. You know, like we've played three games, and this is really two and a half games, and we... Uh, we're halfway through this game, and things are just not rolling. So maybe if you play two and a half more games, um, things pan out. You know, rolls go better, and variance is what it is, right? Sometimes you have great rolls. Sometimes you have really poor rolls. So maybe this team is just uh, one of those, or maybe this, this instance, these instances are just uh, one of those not good rolls games. Uh, so we're going to pay and prep over a Lois Lane, allowing our Superman dice to get over Crush when she is out in the field. And uh, leaving us with one fist. Nothing we can really do with said fist. So I'm going to probably pass over to my, uh, my opponent here. We could attack, but it's actually... It feels really bad to attack here with one character in the field zone because my opponent has... You know, total freedom to just let that through and let that cycle and fill up the bag even more. And uh, I know he's rolling at least one character next turn, and he's got, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, two dice in the bag, and those are the two sidekicks. Then he's refilling, and he's got three uh, character dice that he could pull from uh, two pulls from said bag. So he has an okay chance of drawing two or drawing a character from the last two pulls here. So if I were to attack with that Superman, I'm leaving my board completely open because he's going to obviously let that through. Um, and it was a good thing that we did not attack because he's rolled two character faces. Um, and it looks like that's a... Is that the 4-1 side yet again of Steve Trevor? So really strong die sides um, for the price of Steve Trevor. Pretty pretty good. And there therein lies the thing of uh, Dice Masters, right? When you have 20 health... And, uh, and you have cheap characters that can, you know, come back again and again and again. Uh, looking at stats, stats are important in this game. Uh, in the super high competitive meta where uh, direct damage sort of rules and, um, you know, super high aggro Guy Gardner stuff uh, kind of takes over, stats don't matter as much. But once you take one step back, I think stat uh, stats matter hugely. Um, Jimmy Olsen comes out on his turn, and that reduces his cost of his Superman. This is the rare Superman from the Green Arrow and the Flash, which is a great Superman. Uh, and uh, he is going to go pop that into the bag because uh, Superman's ability allows you to do that when you purchase him. It's a really, really strong Superman, which I think pairs really well with Jimmy Olsen. Um, I would have put that on this team if... Uh, if I had that Superman, that rare Superman. So going to pop, uh, now that I have a board, I'm going to pop uh, Superman out into the field. Uh, I rolled on this turn, I rolled Lois Lane, and she came up as a character face, and so he is an Overcrush character currently. Uh, this would be a good opportunity. I personally think this would be a great opportunity for him to just let this through. It wouldn't be great for us. It would be It would be great if uh, he does it. Well, that's, that's a pretty good thing for us. Him blocking and keeping my character in the field and me dealing free damage. Uh, free damage is always good because I have a character in the field. He's, his characters are KO'd, and uh, I catch up a little bit in the life total, which is great. If he lets that through, then I've got three weak characters in the field. He's got two, and he's pulling two characters. One of them is Superman and Batman in the field. But then again, I guess if you're pulling Batman, if that Batman does come up, then he's basically and, and forces me to reroll, and nothing comes up. It's basically game. There is Batman, and he does immediately come up as I said, and we've got Jimmy Olsen as well. This is the one cost fielding Jimmy Olsen. He's got four energy currently, and that's the th he has exactly the amount of energy that he needs to field the characters that he has rolled thus far. Um, so this is a sort of a press your luck situation because that's a perfect roll if you only care about the forcing the rerolls. Um, if he wants to get a little bit greedy and go for Superman, then he's going to have to get a little bit lucky and land Superman on... Uh, well, actually, he doesn't really... He just needs to land Superman because uh, Jimmy Olsen makes him free to field. 
So this is this is actually a high upside turn for him. It, he doesn't have to get very lucky to be able to land this. He's re-rolling Jimmy Olsen, though. That seems really, really bad. And that comes... Okay, yeah, that's a... <laughs> that ended up very poorly for him because he's going to have to pay to field um, all of this. Actually, that's not too bad, right? He's got the energy for it. One, two, three, four, five, six, and he's got five fielding costs. No, that's perfect. That's fine. Not bad at all. So he's going to be able to pay to field all of that. Can't use any globals. Uh, doesn't have any shields. He can use the spin up global on my side. Uh, spin his character dice up a level. He's going to pay all of that to field. No, he's going to pick up a Nightwing. And uh, then he's going to field. And he can't do that. So he's going to take it back. Silly him. So uh, thinking too far ahead, trying to trying to do too many things at once, he's going to have to pay, I think, all but one of those energy to field all of those characters. So paying and leaving one fist in the uh, field zone, paying the rest, and fielding both characters. That's going to force all of my characters to re-roll here. Let's see if we can get any of those back. If not, then we have issues. Uh, two of them, uh, one of them comes back. Lois Lane comes back. Uh, and I would imagine here he'd want to push for some damage as well. Forcing a reroll and then immediately be, uh, being able to attack into it is extremely strong, which is why I think this uh, this rare Batman is probably the star of that set, of the uh, Batman set. He's going to pump with Haymakers Global, the, uh, the Batman that is getting through, dropping me all the way to five, and that's going to also KO my, uh, KO my lowest lane there. And there are no globals that I can activate to mitigate any of this damage. Uh, there's no globals that allow me to distract back attackers. So um, all of that stuff just burns. Reloading my bag. I'm in a really, really bad spot. Um, the only upside that I can see is that he's going to have to cycle all the way back through his bag um, to get to that Batman again to force me to reroll. He has no way of sort of getting that out. Uh, and... Now I pull the Wonder Woman. Uh, unfortunately, again, it doesn't roll. Uh, but now I pull it one turn after uh, Batman triggers, unfortunately. And, uh, hey, Wonder Woman finally lands. I mean, it's been what? We should have a counter going. That would be great. Get a counter, somebody. Tell me how many times I rolled Wonder Woman last game and this game before she finally f shows up. So I pay three to field her. An insanely high cost, but it's so good. I actually pay two to field her, excuse me. And then I use uh, two shields to prep over two dice. I triggered my resurrection and his resurrection. And then I'm just going to sit and end turn. If I were him, I would totally pressure with the, uh, with the Superman here. I would literally just attack and force me to block with the only thing that is in my field zone, which is that Wonder Woman, um, which stops his uh, when fielded and when attacks effects. That is the only thing that is, uh, I think, able to keep me in this game, is to keep that out in the field and uh, avoid him pulling, then rolling, and then attacking with uh, Batman. And I believe, if I remember correctly, I think Batman's level 1 side is a 4 attack. Perhaps it's a 5. But uh, either way, on 2 of the 3 sides at least, uh, Batman alone kills me. So why not attack that last turn with uh, Superman? I think I would have done it. You don't want me building a board and then uh, coming back. You don't want uh, to allow your opponent that opportunity to come into the game. So here I, I feel Jimmy Olsen and I feel for free uh, Superman. And all of a sudden I have a huge board advantage. Um, and I think I need to put on some pressure. I think the, the best thing to do is save those two, uh, save those two masks. Question marks. What am I saying? Save the two question marks and either spin up uh, the Superman or attack and then buff with Haymaker. Onto, onto the Overcrush Superman. Oh, excuse me, non-Overcrush Superman. So then maybe attacking is not so good. I am going to spin that up, though. Paying the, uh, paying the question mark as a fist from the Giganta Global. And then I'm going to attack. And uh, I have to make up ground here. I mean, I'm 10 back and 15 from winning. So if I don't push any damage at all then and just sit here, then I'm walking into a forced reroll situation. Unfortunately for him, he can't actually trigger that because uh, he didn't attack last turn and now I can block with anything. 
So if there's any possible way of him to uh, uh, remove said Wonder Woman, it would be Truce, it looks like. Him buying up a Truce, rolling it, and then KOing two of his characters. Um, me KOing two of mine, and somehow he getting to a board state where I have to KO Wonder Woman to uh, complete the card um, effect. So he's going to let the Superman go through, which opens up a really nice opportunity. I have a nice board. I've nuked his ability to both wipe my card text and to uh, force rerolls, which luckily for me, both of those dice are now right here. So he's forced to kind of do that um, when he can't actually use their abilities. So if I were him, I would re-roll the Dwarf Wizard because it's not serving to really do anything except be a one attack, you know, character. He's got the Wonder Woman that stops me from using Gigantus Global again. Um, it's a nice little 3-3 body. He's going to re-roll that, though. And he gets the 3 cost 7-5 stat line, which is... Uh, which is a strong stat line, but unfortunately for him, he only has two energy, so he can't actually field it. And so, <laughs> as a bit of uh, a bit of retaliation, I give him the thumbs up from earlier. And luckily for both of us, we were both good sports, and we had a lot of fun. So neither of us took offense. So with that uh, kind of terrible roll. He's going to have to let uh, Batman burn, and he's going to field both of those. And then I would double prep here with Resurrection. I would imagine that's what he'd do. He's going to prep once and then prep the second time. And that just allows him to pull more out of the bag and get stuff uh, moving again. I guess the best thing he can do now, because I certainly am starting to stabilize, the best thing he can do is, uh, is start to cycle as hard as he can. Looks like that dice stayed in the used pile up there. I guess I didn't grab all of the dice at the same time. That's actually a bit of a disadvantage for me. I'd rather that go into the bag and, and uh, trigger a full bag refill. That's one of those things you really shouldn't miss. But it looks like I did. Lois Lane um, doesn't come up. I have a sidekick here. I've got a shield and a question mark. Definitely want Lois Lane to show up. And the sidekick actually could go as well. Uh, we want the sidekick to get gone because we want to purchase a... Eh, well, she shows up and I don't have to pay to field her, which is great. Um, sidekick goes out. I should have rerolled the sidekick because I, I could at this moment pay three for a Superman. It would go into the bag uh, eventually. But having a Superman is, you know, really good. Uh, the other option here is to uh, just double prep with Resurrection. That Lois Lane again does not have the um, does not have the super affiliation, so it does not discount that Superman further. But luckily, we do double prep and get a Superman right off the uh, right off the bag there, right off the top. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's two sidekicks in the bag. That is it, and maybe another super. Nope, just two sidekicks in the bag. Which means we will uh, we will re-roll everything, or we'll basically cycle the bag again. Rerolling his characters, he's starting to build up a little bit of a board as well. I was in no position to attack last turn, and uh, I only drew you know Lois Lane and some sidekicks, so I'm allowing him some time to get back onto the board, which is problematic because he does have a seven-eight Superman body there which is really really strong and can not fully mitigate the damage from overcrush superman that i'm going to be running but can do it enough to where uh attacking with one superman is really really tough you know the he the superman that i would be running uh can trade with his superman by using the haymaker global if, if they're both on seven eights um i can pay haymakers global to uh, buff it to an eight eight and he can do that same thing on the same turn during the same attack step. He would just have to save a mask or a, or excuse me, a fist or a question mark. He's gonna buy up another, uh, buy up another Batman there, which is a really really strong character, and especially for five, which is insane. But unfortunately for him, that uh, wind fielded effect yet again does not field or does not trigger because uh, Wonder Woman is blocking that.
So everything comes into the uh, into the bag and out of the bag. Rolling it all, Superman pops up immediately, which is great. Which is great. Uh, gonna field up two more sidekicks, and uh, we've got three energy here to uh, three energy here to buy another Superman. Probably best to re-roll one or both of those sidekicks to look for one energy with which to prep over another Superman purchase. We just need to stack those up at this point. I think a five and six chance one time is uh, is good enough to get us an energy. Unfortunately for that, uh, actually we needed uh, what? We needed a question mark or a shield. And so it wasn't a five and six, it was a what? Two and six? One and three? So probably would have been better to roll both of those sidekicks. I'm stuck with two fists here, which can spin up my characters. Don't really need to spin up anything but Superman. So I can also um, use... Uh, actually, Superman is not on its highest level. It looked like it was on its highest level, but it's not. Going to attack with that 7-8 Superman. I would imagine he would block with his 7-8 uh, Superman. And that would force me then to pay the fist. Let's see. It looks like he's not thinking about blocking with... No, he chooses to block with Superman. I'm going to buff, and it's going to KO his Superman. Mine will come back. So at the very least, we've taken out his uh, his very large, large-scale blocker. So the hope there is that he doesn't roll it in uh, two tries. So that it goes back into the bag and stays out. And first try is a success. He does get uh, Batman. The win fielded effect being nuked actually makes Batman his fielding cost really, really high for his stat line. A 7-5 is really is really good, but that 5 defense can be KO'd by like 4 cost characters, which, um, you know, kind of makes it bad, especially paying 3 for it. His ability itself is just so, so powerful, though. So the question here being, does he want to re-roll the Batman and go for the Superman, or does he want to keep what he has and be able to field everything? If he keeps what he has, he can use the final energy that he has to prep over uh, some dice. He's going to re-roll Superman, Superman, though. It looks like that uh, Batman is not on its three level 3 side. Look, looks like he'll have to pay 1 for it. Superman comes right back up. Oh, that's really unfortunate for us. So he'll pay to field one of those, which is Batman. He doesn't have to pay to field Superman because of Jimmy Olsen's signal watch. Going to pay two to pick up another Jimmy Olsen. And from there, he's got a really sizable board. Luckily for us, we, uh, we're only two health behind. And I think we're really sort of both within striking distance of being able to deal that. I need to pick up more Superman dice. That's the number one thing, is, is we need to get a couple of Superman dice in the field. Keeping his characters off the field by attacking constantly, uh, but not overextending to the point where if he rerolls everything on the backswing, then we have issues. That being said, I think attacking here is the right thing to do because we need to get him to block with either Superman or with uh, Batman to get some big blocker off the field. And that is what happens, which is good for us. Next turn, we will have two Superman dice attacking each turn. And we've got uh, a couple of chump blockers and uh, a couple of characters that... Some of them don't matter, and one of them is very important in Wonder Woman. So we only block with Wonder Woman on things that does, don't KO her. Batman uh, doesn't come up the first time. Superman does. Oh, and Batman comes right back. So this is, uh, this is a really, really sizable board for him. He's got a pretty big advantage here. He can't attack, though, which is the really interesting thing, because he's not going to get anything through at this point. Um, so he's going to pass, and now I have three Superman dice I'm rolling. If we can get all three to stick, then we have uh, we could just have lethal here. So we've got one of them, and we've got a fist to keep it on its highest level. The other one does not stick. Um, now the question here being, do we attack with both Superman dice? We're going to buy a third one, 
or by the last one, excuse me. I'm paying with the mask instead. And uh, I'm going to double prep in the bag so that we can cycle that third Superman. Going to attack immediately. And this is this bears more thinking, right? We, we, we should probably think this through because this board is so sizable. We are very close to uh, being able to punch through this wall with the overcrush ability. But he's got the ability to just stack up a bunch of stuff. Um, the goal here with him blocking you know like this strong means we, we can only really ko one of each of his dice we can't ko all four dice um this is probably why why we shouldn't have uh, attacked with both of these characters with his board being so sizable so we can ko one batman and we can ko you know like uh one superman Uh, both of my dice will KO, and I think that was a really, really poor attack step for me. I should not have pushed that much in, especially, wow, that is going to be so many characters he rolls. If really, if, what, two of these characters come, well, one, two, three, four, five. He's got five in the field, and I've got five in the field. He needs five damage, so he needs uh, that, well, he's almost there anyway. That's a three cost, or the three attack guy. It's hard to tell if that's a two attack or three attack, uh, Steve Trevor. If it's the four attack, Steve Trevor, and a sidekick, that does it. Yeah, that's game, essentially. So if any of these characters, basically if any of these characters come up, that's game. Um, yeah, several of those characters came up. So unfortunately for us, we overextended, overextended on that last attack, uh, leaving ourselves a little too open. His He was able to build a really, really strong board, just built off the stats of the characters that he had. Uh, which really just countered this. And I think therein lies the problem with uh, the you know what we rolled into. Um, having these poor rolls and not setting ourselves up for success with both our team building and our, um, our choices purchasing and, and rolling and all of that all the way throughout uh, this game. We, we played a long game and we should have played a short game because he has the characters to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, attacking and blocking. Here it doesn't matter how uh, blockers are assigned because I, even if I allow um, only the smallest characters to go through, I'm still taking seven. And I'm at five, so that is game right off the top there right away because he can buff with two fists um, to finish that out. So Tyler picks up game number three, which puts me at one and two. And uh, this is Tyler's team. I think his team is really, really cool. Uh, just those those bottom four characters are very strong. Um, Jimmy Olsen's signal watch fetching that Superman up, up, and away is really cool. And if you have not seen or not looked at that Superman, you should really take a look at it. That was, that's a Superman, that's a rare, excuse me, that I wish I had. Um, it is really, really strong. The Allowing you to uh, add that to your bag every time you purchase it. Um, is really cool. So overall, um, I would make some changes to the team. Obviously, if I'm going to run a uh, an unlimited version, excuse me, a constructed variant of this team, I'd make several mini changes to this spine. I think this this idea of cost reduction Superman is strong. You know, having a four cost character that does give them overcrush is a workaround. Um, there are a, a couple of other ways to give those characters overcrush and or just to make them unblockable. It's worth tooling around and seeing if either of those methods have any more merit than using this promo lowest lane. But I like the spine. I like the uh, wind condition itself. It just needs some tooling. So with all of that being said, let me know what you guys think about uh, these games, about this team. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.